The next level on our hierarchy is administrative controls. And these are really checks and balances to influence the way that people carry out their activities and their work within the workplace. Examples of these could be producing specific procedures or systems of work that the employees must follow to ensure that they don't come to harm or providing specific employee training for the type of activity that's being carried out or it could be something as simple as providing signage on the equipment where the hazard exists. Can you think of any relevant examples that we use within health and safety as an administrative control? That's right, risk assessment. The risk assessment process itself is an administrative control to an extent when you're communicating it to others because you're informing people of the hazards that exist and the control measures that should be in place to prevent them or reduce the risk of them coming to harm. We've reached the fifth and final option when it comes to the hierarchy of control and that is personal protective equipment. Otherwise known as PPE, it's regarded as the least effective and the last line of defence when it comes to controlling risk. So it's not something we want to depend on. When we're talking about PPE, we're talking about things like hard hats, protective gloves, safety shoes, safety goggles and so on. So that gives you an overview of the hierarchy of control measures and something to remember when we're going through that process is that always remember that we need to be looking at what the outcome or the likelihood and severity of the hazard is in the first place when we're deciding what control measures are appropriate and proportionate to control it. Okay, I know, it's easy enough to say Make sure that your measures are going to be proportionate to the risk that exists. But when we talk about putting reasonable control measures in place, what are we actually saying and how do we decide what is reasonable? Well, we need to look at our options and balance the time, cost and effort against the amount of risk that we see being reduced as a result of our control measures. If we can strike the right balance, we can add value for the employees and for the business. So for example, if we had a low severity and low likelihood hazard or activity that we'd specified in a risk assessment, do you think that it would be worthwhile to put lots of money and resources towards adding more control measures? It probably won't be because we're already looking at a low risk as it is. On the other hand, if we had a hazard or an activity that was taking place that presented a high likelihood of causing harm and when that harm was caused, the severity was likely to be significant, then as you can imagine, it starts to make more sense for us to invest the time, money and resources towards mitigating or controlling that risk further.